Who doesn't love a big old bag of potato crisps? I know I do. And so do billions of people worldwide. There are several brands that make crispy potato chips, but many would agree that none does it like Pringles. From the special taste of each chip to different flavors available and the classic packaging, what's not to love? The Pringles making process takes about 20 minutes. However, the effect of a standard bottle of Pringles lasts much longer, and it's all thanks to the magic that goes on in the factory. We go behind the scenes to see what happens in a potato chips factory as well as an insight into the special process used at the Pringles factory. Potato chips are one of the most popular snacks in the world. However, some people may be opposed to them, especially when they're too greasy or come in bags that do little to prevent the chips from powdering up when the slightest amount of pressure is applied. It is for these reasons and more that Pringles potato chips are truly different. The idea for this near-perfect snack came to the founding company, Procter & Gamble, by accident. And since its introduction in the mid-1950s, Pringles have been a delight to countless people worldwide. Even though Pringles has a peculiarity to it, its production process is similar to that of other stackable chips. Rather than being produced by frying fresh potatoes, they are produced by frying a dough mix made out of potato starch and water. Potato starch is a white powder produced when starch extracted from potato tubers is completely dried up. To make this powder, raw potatoes are crushed resulting in starch grains and damaged potato cells. The starch is separated, crushed, left to dry, and at the end of the day, it forms a white powder. Potato starch is gluten-free, which makes it a healthy substitute for regular flour in many cooking processed foods. The potato starch is shipped off in bags to the potato crisp companies, and a factory worker begins the process of mixing the dough. At first, the potato starch is mixed with water in a ratio of one-third of water to two-thirds of potato starch. And since the water content is small, the resulting mixture isn't as sticky as regular dough. Once that ratio has been satisfied, small quantities of cornstarch and oil are added to the mix, which is then thoroughly stirred in the mixer. Since potato starch is flavorless, the Pringles company adds a special secret ingredient into the dough mixture and this gives the potato flavor that is so evident in each chip. From the mixer, the mix is delivered to a moving conveyor, which in turn delivers it to an auger. This auger disperses the dough, making it look something like moist powder, before delivering it to another moving conveyor. This conveyor carries the scattered dough to the next phase of production, where it's made into thin, long potato sheets. This is done by mechanical rollers, which apply about two tons of pressure to the dough as it moves on the conveyor down below. This process lasts just a few seconds before the conveyor transports the flat potato sheet to the next stop, which is rotary cutters. Just like with the rollers, these cutters also roll on the potato sheet, except they consist of several oval-shaped cutters, which cut the flat sheet into hundreds upon hundreds of oval-shaped flattened doughs. As the conveyor carrying the pre-cut dough moves away from the cutter, another device pulls off the scrap dough left from the cutting, and this scrap is recycled and flattened again with a new batch of uncut potato sheets. And this process goes on and on. For the already cut pieces, they travel on another steel conveyor into the fryer, where they are fried at a high temperature. At the fryer, there are giant curved molds, which roll on the cut pieces as soon as they enter the fryer. The pressure from this mold creates the inward depression that makes the chips stackable. The chips pass through the hot oil for just 11 seconds, and they come out very crispy, but until now, they are still bare and unflavored. Next, the chips are passed through a blower to drain the excess oil, and afterward, they pass through a machine which coats them with seasoning. A set number of fried chips are passed through different coating stations, since different flavors of chips are being produced at the same time. After being coated, the chips are mechanically flipped to another conveyor, changing their orientation. As a result of this flip, the chips are now arranged in neat piles and in several long rows. A factory worker inspects these rows, looks out for incorrectly positioned chips, and realigns them in preparation for the next phase, which is the packaging. Just before they are packaged, the chips are moved to a vibrating conveyor, and the movement helps to loosen up the pile of chips, making them easier to package. This vibration conveyor takes the chips to a scale, which weighs the right amount of chips that should be in each box or bag depending on the company's packaging. As the scales sort out the chips into portions, another machine, which acts as an automatic spoon, scoops each portion chip into the designed container for the chips, whether box or bag. 
Mechanical fingers nudge the packaging to ensure the chips stay in the right position. Next, another machine seals the package, and chips of the same flavor are packaged together and placed in a box. These boxes are taken to the warehouse, and from there, they are shipped to retailers across the world. Now that we've received general knowledge about the production of these potato chips, it's time to talk about the special way in which Pringles are made. Apart from ensuring that the production process goes well, a few skilled people are employed by the company to make sure that the product does not fall below the high standard they've set in the chip manufacturing industry. In addition to the well-trained factory workers, a lot of flavor experts are employed at the Pringles factory. Many people, especially foodies, think this is the perfect job. However, you might want to get familiar with their job description before you envy their post. The basic factor that affects the flavor of any food is the ingredients used. Therefore, the job of a flavor expert begins before the mixing phase. Once the ingredients arrive at the factory from the respective suppliers, they are screened at the factory's laboratory. The potato starch flour is weighed and passed through a sieve to separate lumps from powder. After passing the first test, the powder is sent to the factory, which is used to make the chips. Not just the potato starch, but also all the other ingredients are inspected in similar manners and they can only be used in the factory after the experts in the laboratory have approved them. Once the chip production is complete, samples are taken for another round of testing before the chips are packaged. They are weighed and checked to see if they have the right texture before their flavors are also tested. If any chip tastes weird or is coated with the wrong kind of flavor, the entire production line is shut down, and the process starts all over again, with more monitoring this time. However, in the absence of such issues, the chips move on to the next inspection phase. At the next and final step, samples of packaged Pringles are sent to a special room where more flavor experts conduct a more thorough inspection of the flavor of the chips. They test the chips based on the level of doneness, saltiness, seasonings, and whether it's the right texture. This test is conducted in a dimly lit room so that the expert can compare the taste of the freshly made chips to a classic without being influenced by anything they see. The taste is all that matters. Although it rarely happens, the entire production within the same frame is completely scrapped if a subpar chip is noticed. The flavor experts are the secret ingredients to the consistency we can all attest to in Pringles chips, and because of how important their job is, it's not given to just anyone. What is your favorite Pringles variant? Leave your answer in the comment section below.